Welcome back to Greg Hjorth's Greatest Hits. This, is, in fact, is a game that uh, Hjorth lost but against a reasonably creditable opponent. It was played in the Dortmund World Junior Championship. Uh, Greg Hjorth played three World Junior Championships with uh, results uh, at or near the top ten in all three events, uh, the only Australian to have done that. Uh, in this particular World Junior in Dortmund, he, in fact, was very close to a medal. He played uh, Nigel Short in the last round. He needed to beat Short. Uh, to finish equal second. In fact, he uh, drew the game and finished uh, equal sixth, I believe. But the winner of that event, the clear winner, was a, a young player called Gary Kasparov. Uh, Kasparov has prior to, had prior to this event not a great record in uh, international junior events. He'd twice played the World Cadet Championship, both times come in third, uh, and none too impressive third uh, either. So. Uh, but by the time he played in the World Junior in Dortmund, though, his rating was already up near 2600 at a time when uh, only 10 players in the world had a 2600 rating and uh, he, he was the class player in the field. So uh, one thing about his game against Greg Hjorth, it was played in round 10 near the end, uh, so it was a relatively important game. Hjorth was, was challenging for the top places at the time and, and Kasparov really needed to win this particular game. Uh, it was also published uh, as the best game by Kasparov from this World Junior uh, in a number of the Soviet uh, magazines, though a number of them uh, misunderstood Greg Hjort's name and thought that uh, the opponent was Vlastimil Hjort, uh, the Czech Grandmaster. Uh, and in fact, in a number of books on the, the particular opening, it's listed as Kasparov Hort rather than Kasparov Hjort, uh, perhaps because they wouldn't believe that uh, Kasparov would deign to play a player as, uh, as minor as, as Greg Hjorth, but uh, in any case, eventually, uh, in the, when the databases started coming out, uh, the right player was credited with the, the game. So, the game starts as a uh, Queen's Gambit de declined Tarish defence, and certainly the opening is, is absolutely standard. This is the line that uh, Boris Spassky used to neutralise Tigger and Petrosian during their World Championship matches in the 60s. And here, White can play, well, a number of ideas, but Bishop G5 is, is the main line. Uh, taking on C5 is the other main line. And certainly, Black can play uh, Rook E8 here. He can take on D4 and play H6, uh, which is the way Spassky used to play it. But C4 is the ambitious move that uh, Greg Kjolf played. <clears throat> the move acquired a poor reputation in large part because of this game, but uh, I later started looking at the line and realised that it could be quite uh, dangerous for White as well. So 95 is, is a, a very good response. Uh, afterwards, uh, well, the, the threat is the d5 pawn at some point. White also wants to play f4, so bishop e6. And here Kasparov's moves f4 was almost universally played, though uh, about 10 years on, people started to think, well, perhaps... <clears throat> moves like uh, e3 or or even knight takes c3, uh, 6 and e3 might be more sober, but f4 looked very dangerous when Kasparov played it. And here, uh, the move played by Greg, knight takes e5, is perhaps not as good as uh, knight g4, which looks like it leaves the d5 pawn in trouble, but it turns out that uh, the tactics work out okay for black. If bishop takes e7, you can take back with the knight on e7, and, uh, well, so for example, if uh, knight takes g4 here, you take back, and if knight takes d5, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, followed by rook a d8, and black's pawn structure is all over the place, uh, but white cannot get those centre pawns moving uh, the way he'd like to, and uh, the, certainly this position is, is simply unclear. So, instead, Take on e5. I think prior to this game, White had often taken back with the d-pawn, which is certainly playable, but not clear at all, but Kasparov took back with the f-pawn. Uh, knight e4 is, is the only active move. Take, 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 and e4, and queen d7. And this position, it looks as if uh, black is holding everything together. That is, if you take on d5, bishop takes d5, those centre pawns aren't going too far. But, uh, in fact, Kasparov came up with a really good plan around here. Uh, it looks as if White should be going for the kingside, and in fact he should, but first Kasparov killed counterplay with a4. 
So it stops black plan of B5, A5, B4 using that poor majority on the queen side. And uh, it's just very difficult for uh, black to find a good plan around here. Um, if you take on e4, bishop takes, bishop d5, we can play moves like bishop f5 if we want to. Uh, so Kasparov played, uh, rather, Hjorf played rook fd8. It's possible that's the wrong rook, uh, but it was hard to know at the time. Queen h5 doesn't look so dangerous, rook c8, but here rook f4, and you begin to see the problems now for uh, Hjorf with rook h4 coming, and of course white doubling on the file. So rook c7 to guard the f7 square, doubles, and, well, Hjorf decided to go pawn grabbing with queen takes a, uh, a4. Uh, it's just very hard to find a, a good plan. For example, if you take on e4, uh, then uh, bishop takes back, uh, g6, queen h6, and there's rook h4 coming, and, yeah, it's really hard to see uh, black surviving this. He'll have to move his f-pawn at some point, but... Uh, it, it does look like the attack is going to be overwhelming. Queen takes H a4, though, is asking for trouble and uh, uh, walks into some very nice tactics by Kasparov. So, after e takes d5, Hjorth took back with the rook. It, at first sight, it looks like a Petrosian-like exchange sacrifice, but in fact, it's, it's forced because if bishop takes d5, we can just swap, and then the f7 pawn is, is under attack and black's position will collapse. After rook takes, though, bishop takes, bishop takes, Kasparov found the great move e6, and here, there's just no defence for black. The uh, bishop is under attack. Uh, you can't take on e6 with the pawn because of rook f8 checkmate. So you have to take with the bishop, and after d5, wherever you move the bishop, there'll be rook f7. So Hjorth tried to defend with tactics. It's a nice idea uh, with queen b5, but unfortunately rook h4 is a very clever way of both protecting the queen and threatening the h7 pawn. Hjorth tried queen check, uh, rook up, and then bishop takes d5. But now instead of taking on h7, which is perfectly good, uh, Kasparov just decided he could win that bishop. Rook across and rook f5, and the bishop on d5 is doomed, so Hjorth resigned. So very uh, good tactical control by Kasparov. Uh, typically ambitious line by Hjorth. It was, at the time, cutting-edge theory. Kasparov had to show a new idea with f takes e5 to win it, and uh, that was really the game that decided the World Junior Championship with uh, Hjorth dropping out of the running for the top placing and Kasparov uh, eventually coasting to victory.